be real two. professional. <laughs> Three, two, and one. All right, welcome back to another edition of Dirty Talk. I am the host, Dirty Cuts, and I'm here with the lovely... VP, how y'all doing? And I'm also here with the lovely... CC215. All right, all right. So look here, man. We got a special guest tonight. This brother, uh, this brother's on the airways 24-7 for your pleasure. The none other than my boy, Osama Ben Drinking. <laughs> Yeah, okay. it, it's really like four five because I'm on for four hours in the morning, five days a week. I'm off on the weekend, oh. so it's really like four five. <laughs> well, you know well, 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 well I mean, was. well, commercials. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Appreciate y'all having me here, man. Nice. Heck yeah, man. Thank you. Hey, thank you for coming, brother. For real, man. Hey, pleasure's real. all mine, man. For real, I'm excited. I'm excited that you're here today. Oh yeah. All right, so uh, you on you on dirty talk, brother. So we gonna get on down to the stinking like Get on in it. Well, things, okay. Get on in it. So uh, on this platform, we already right here by the bus station. You so y'all ain't. I mean, <laughs> it, it, yeah, police, we, we police get station it. on the other side. <laughs> okay. The uh, jail right here. Oh lord, the jail. I uh, got up. I parked my car. House, I hit that alarm house. like five <laughs> times. The new courthouse with the tunnel in the new courthouse. You in the heart of the train, baby. Girl. Yeah, they got that over there now, girl. <laughs> yes, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. So on this platform, we know like to go through the uh, the past, present, and the future, the things. So I just want to go ahead and start off. Where you from, man? Where you repping? How you? Uh, how did you come up? Well, uh, I was born and raised in Charlotte, and uh, got a tattoo on me that say, you know, seven oh four. Uh, raised me, but 336 made me because I, know that's uh, right. I became into my own of drink while I was here up in the 336. Well, you know, in college at A&T. Okay. And Shout out to A&T. That's where the whole that's where the whole Osama been drinking thing started right up here in the, in the 336. So. Okay. Born and raised in Charlotte, but I only lived in two spots. That's Charlotte and Greensboro. Did you start off with the Mad Dog or 151? Which one? Did. Did. <laughs> Mad, MD 2020 did. Yeah. In, in high school. Yeah. Mad Dog 2020. Yeah, that Cisco. Was, that was crazy the, horse. That was the introduction. Yeah, that's the introduction. Mad yeah. Dog 22 in the Wild Irish Road. Yeah. Yeah. Night seven, train seven with Kool Aid four. in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven that, was in, in that was easy. That was easy answer. Dang, you started in seven. You started seven drinking grade. in seven grade. Right. We used to carry gin and juice to school and little really? bottles and stuff. God. Uh, see, I started in tenth grade. Ah. You know what I'm that mother said seven grade. Hey, she was seven grade. <laughs> Oh. Yes, she was. So hey, you ain't just me. You so, so you just went straight to drinking. <laughs> you ain't grabbed not one penis. You went straight. You did that to yourself. You went straight through the liquor. Oh shit! Damn. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, so in my neighborhood. Right behind how y'all oh. city was the uh, Great America. Great America. Oh, that's, that's the store. That's the store. That's the corner store. And that's where everybody hung out at. Yeah. Mm. And so when you young and you with the dope boys, yeah. you can get you a little drink. You know what? I was the dope boy's sister. See? I could always get a drink. I'm glad y'all. I'm she glad was, you just I said that. Today. You know, me and my homeboy were just talking about that the other day and how we, and you know, we was talking about how we used to buy, you know what I'm saying, Matt Wild Irish Rolls and stuff in high school. Because, mm -hmm. you know, the A-Rabs and stuff, yeah, they, they, they didn't let you fuck, buy. Because they, like, they yeah. didn't give a fuck about us. They, like, they didn't give a fuck. They was like, these little niggas going to grow up to be alcoholics. So They're going to be coming back here buying this shit for the rest of their life. Thank God for might grace. Might as well get them started but now. I didn't end up that way. Yeah, yeah might as well yeah. get them started. They motherfucking give a fuck about us. But, but they start drinking early over in the Middle East, too. So I, maybe they just, you know, I, I get what you're saying, but I understand their culture. As well. Yeah, fuck that. But they but weren't they, drinking Mad Dog 2020 and all that crazy shit, sis. I didn't taste Mad Dog 2020 until I was like 21 years old. Oh, wow. oh you was sheltered. Yeah. No, I wasn't. I was not sheltered. What it was was is that I went from Philadelphia straight to Florida and you know when you get into that stripper life, you know what I'm saying, I'm straight cognac girl, but then when somebody said, oh, it was cold outside a few times, mm. it's cold in Florida, <laughs> they was like, oh yeah, let's drink some Damn. great It's done switch from you to her now. <laughs> so what age you start stripping in Florida? Oh, I can tell you most definitely. Um, I started stripping at the age of 18. I had to pay for a biology book that neither of my parents had the money for. Fresh. You was diamond. Yeah. Well, I well love, sapphire. I, no. Sapphire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm far 
Sapphire. You was Sapphire. Ooh, that's a, that's a blue diamond, ain't it? Ruby. Let me be fair. Is I that watched, a blue diamond? I, yes, it's blue. Sapphire. So I watched Players Club and I told my mom to her face when, when my brother brought it home on that VHS. Remember how people used to go to yeah. the theaters and record it? Yeah. I said, oh, mom, that's what I'm going to be when I grow up. And she was just like, all that money I spent on dance, ballet, tap, jazz, going to Africa. Well, I felt as though when you had me on the stage, when you had to spend the money, now I'm making the money. So uh -huh. I think it balanced it's itself it's out. So therefore, instead of me just jumping up there for free, shaking, I was making some bread. And she she, she did real good off of me shaking my tail. Ooh. She really did. She still does I kinda, to this day. I kind of feel like you was Ronnie up in there at some point you know telling the whole way. <laughs> 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 I feel like you were Ronnie up in yeah, there. No. I was not. She was Ronnie. That's why she's my uh, spirit animal. Girl, so just, she just gone Ronnie. up in there. Yeah, just gone, just up, gone in. up in there and shake ass. Yeah. I'll be right outside. Yeah, bring okay. the money back to me. No, I didn't even do all that. I did show a couple of girls the road. You know, you that was got about that kind it. Of she she is that damn she Oh, she, she knows she's not scared to talk, yeah. speak her mind, none of that, and tell them up. Yeah, I'm. I'm mm. that devil, you got a little devil in you. Yeah. I don't know what y'all talking about. All I'm saying is, I tried to help the girls out. I was trying to let them know how to make the money. You know what I'm saying? Let the That's what's up. you make the money. Don't let the money make you. That's All right. right. All right, Osama. So, so check it. So you went to A&T, right? What you yep. major in, bro? Well, uh, I came into school as a nursing major. Nursing major. Straight up nursing major. I, you know, I was going to be a nurse. And I got to my, like, you my. You came on with some state for that, brother. No, nah, I mean, well, I S -U. mean. SU. SU. My family, then, all of my family went to Winston Salem State. A lot of my, you know, my aunts, uncles, even my mom went there for a couple years. Mm -hmm. So I was raised on Winston Salem State. But when I got a taste of Aggie Land, I was like, nah, bruh. But uh, yeah, I came in as a nursing major. <laughs> I came in as a nursing major, man. Three years in nursing. And I got the time to, uh, you know, we do clinicals where you go to the nursing home. And, you know, our professors was explaining to us, like, you know, well, you may go into the nursing home and it's going to be some, some white folk in there who are stuck in the old times and they may, you know, call you some things. And I flat out told them right then. I was like, but somebody called me a nigga where they going to be sitting in there dirty in their bed. And I and I knew right then this wasn't a job for me. Mm -hmm. I was like, I ain't got the heart for it because you got to go in there with a clear, with a you know, with a clear heart. Okay. No matter what the people say to you and stuff, you gotta, you know, take care of them and stuff. But as soon as they would have called me a nigga, dang, they would have been in there pissy hell, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Stinking, so I knew that one for me. So I switched on over to my second love, which was athletics, and I graduated with a degree in uh in human performance. Okay. So, so how yeah. did you get into radio? How I get into radio? Yeah, it's like. Boom. Comedy led me to radio. Comedy led you. Yeah, like I got into a point where I was uh, I was working uh, working the food line mm -hmm. as a cashier and I was also doing landscaping. Uh, you know, to make ends meet. I was doing those two jobs. And I started doing comedy with uh B Dot, Burpee, Darren, Chico Bean. Mm -hmm. And uh from that, you know, of course Dot was on the radio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Opportunity presented itself, you know, he was like, yo. Man, you need to start coming up into. He saw something in me I didn't see in myself, mm -hmm. and I always give him props for that. You know what I'm saying? Cause he told me he's like, "Yo, you need to come up and start doing this crazy shit you be doing on the radio on Fridays," mm -hmm. and I started doing that. And you know, every Friday, not getting paid led to. I did that for like three years. Mm -hmm. Every Friday for like three years, not getting paid. Then that led to you know spot on the radio. Wow, but oh. that consistency wow. though. Yeah. yeah. I remember just listening to you call yeah, in. I remember yeah. you, but that consistency. I remember yeah. when you was when you was blowing up and all that stuff. We all, we kind of had a little incident. <laughs> Wait, no, no, that, incident. We, no, we did, we did, we we did. Like I I was going down. Yeah. Like I met this brother saved my life. Oh. <laughs> like I was, I don't know. It's something about Winston Salem State's homecoming too. I go down oh. there and some. It's, it's something about the liquor hit me different down there because uh -huh. it just happened last homecoming too. I was like, man, why am I hot? Uh -huh. But that brother caught me at my time. I was going down. Like, I was drunk. Uh -huh. And I was started sweating. I said, that's your boy from the radio. I'm feeling like I'm about to earl. My man came. He was like, hey, man, take a water, man, and sit down. He hid me from everybody, too. Yeah. Sat me down on a cooler oh, back behind him. a tent. I said, you <laughs> I said bro, just sit down. Huh? I said, wow. you need something to eat or anything? Bro? No, oh, I just man. need to You was at what's the same? Stay right home. home. I was. Wow. I, and I, I was mean, fucked. Was party uh, at home. Oh, yes, he was. That day. I think I went home at six o'clock and I ain't wake up to six o'clock the next day. Oh God! Wow. Yeah, yeah, that was a time. That was a time. Boy, we party hard that yeah. day. Yeah. Dirty mm. cut saved my life. Oh, that's yeah. dope. Oh. Hats off to you, Ricardo. Yes, go hats off. Shout outs to B Dot. That's yeah. what's yeah. up. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So, yeah. so yeah, that's how the whole radio thing came about, man. And it was kind of like just you know, 
they say success uh, success is when you know uh, opportunity meets preparation, and I was just ready. I was never scared to. Definitely. Ready. I was never scared to tell a joke or get in front of people or do nothing like that. So. Do you still do comedy? Yeah. You do. I still do stand up right now. Um, you're not stealing from Cat Williams, are you? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, shit. No, 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 no. Oh, I don't shit. want no smoke. I don't want that smoke. He said, all y'all stealing. I don't want Cat that smoke. I don't want that smoke. Hey, Cat got them. Cat took off for 2024. He burned the damn internet down. He let them know. I'm going to start this year, all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, what yeah. you think about that? Yeah, yeah. what's your opinion what's on that? Your, my opinion on it is, uh, number one, first of all, uh, Cat is one of the greatest to me because he's independent. Mm -hmm. yep. For like so, usually first. when people go on tours and stuff, there there's a promoter or a sponsor or something like that. Nah, Cat is the promoter. Cat is the sponsor. Oh, so he's the, May the Mayweather he, of it all. He, yes, that's right. That's right. He he kind of like if you want if if you ask me, he is a Mayweather promotions mm -hmm. of comedy because okay. he'll put his own shows on. So I will always respect Cat for that, and he 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 the goat for that. But that interview. When I saw it, I knew what it was. I was like, "Man, this is that boy smart. It's great marketing." We been think it was we, another stand-up comedy. Is that too? I was like, "Yeah, he within, uh, the, within the interview. We, within the interview, yeah, he gave us a set within the interview." But <laughs> you know, being on the radio, we've been playing his commercials for his tour for the last month or two, if not that. You know, what I'm saying a month or two, month and a half or so. So I knew he had a tour coming. He's doing a tour this year. Yeah. When I saw the interview, I was like, "Man, that's smart. Great marketing." That's right. Yeah. Cause now, but yeah, them ticket like sales going up, the, going, going out the roof. Going out the roof. They going out the roof. They going out the roof. But I mean, a lot of stuff he was saying, I felt like it was real. But then all the other stuff in between, you know, because it was all over the place. I started saying, "All right, now, cat." <laughs> You know, you could tell the, the three thousand books a day. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm not. I, 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 bro. But you know, he was. I think he, he said was a thousand a, every year. He was a, a thousand Mensa, a year, something like that. A year, yeah. He was a Mensa student or something like that, or or however they induct people into Mensa and stuff uh -huh. like that. Like if you read his biography, he he was one of those prodigy type of children. And he was he was he was like uh. Accepted in the college at seven. That's what he said. <laughs> see, see, when you see, look at her. See, she immediately like she immediately laughed. At seven, and she and Cece maybe, looking at me like. Now maybe it's some kind of some exceptions. I know they have some programs where you can get a degree within high school. But he was seven though. Like, who's even applying for college? Well, that's a prodigy, when you're bro. Seven years old. That's a prodigy, right but there. But you know what? After, well, I after mean, hearing him speak, right. And if he was he a prodigy, said. he's in the right place, goddamn it, because he's all he's worldwide known. Yes, and, and uh, yeah, he is that, definitely. I mean, he's, he he's, def he's definitely right. known. He's definitely known. He, he definitely did known. something right. But I don't know. I'm just saying, you know, stealing car radios at 13, yeah, and making almost two thousand dollars a day, that was off the chains too. Yeah, that was. It was just a lot of stuff in it. It was just it a, was lot. a lot. It, it was, was just a lot. lot. Like I didn't like. I think maybe exaggerated just a little. Bit. Just, I mean, I don't. Hey, hey, if that's his truth. That's his truth. But some jokes in there. I was right? just, I just, you know. Don't you think it, it was, was what it was? It was what it was. Yeah, he probably but said like, it just so people could have some type of in their stand up. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I'm that type of person. I'll say something just to throw you off, just I, to have you have something to talk about. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. Just to fool with you. And then when I come back with my stuff, yeah. now you're looking dumb. I mean, I don't know. Cat, I watched, I, I saw Cat last year uh -huh. and, at the Coliseum. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I, I would say, it's a lot with Cat. He's, he's, he's a colorful horse from like Wizard of Oz. Like, he got a lot going on. Yeah. I don't even mean that in a negative way. I just mean he's a very, He's one of those special people. Mm. He's special. He's a colorful horse. I feel like Shannon didn't, didn't really didn't ask a lot of the questions that we wanted to know. Shannon didn't even had like, a, like I don't feel like he asked the question that we want to know. What's the bang question? question? Like what was you doing in that third world looking soccer field? Playing soccer with a bunch of random kids and people, yeah. and then get into a scrap for with, a with a teenager <laughs> and lost. <laughs> oh God! Were you not high, Cat? Were you not high? <laughs> like, like, so, 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 Sh only so you don't want to know, about. Shannon? So you don't want to know, Shannon? No, because we wanted to know. I think Shannon just wanted boy, to know. Boy, hey, talk. that she little boy, that little boy stressed yeah. Cat William ass out, boy. You hear me? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. You know what? Maybe he just wanted to have fun that day, and no. that was just a way. No. Did you see how his hair was? No. His hair was <laughs> and the outfit. No. And the outfit. Let me be. Let me be the mind. A coat holder. I truly believe 
that Cat deals with some mental issues, uh, and he and I believe that he does just as long as long with Kanye. So my mental health people, yo, power to y'all. And sometimes that manicness will come out and get you in trouble. Honestly, you can see how Cat went. You see how he goes from being calm and going kind of manic, then he comes back. You can see the Lexapro working. And mm. sometimes it doesn't. Not the Lexapro. Mm. The Lexapro. Because <laughs> that make you go out in the middle of the street and be like, stop in the name. Because <laughs> my Lexapro was the bomb. It was just a lot. And then, and then you know. <laughs> I'm just saying. Because Lexapro was that top notch drug. It, it, it for me, it was just a lot. Look that one up. I'm trying to tell you that. All, he just he <laughs> looked like he be on the Lexapro. I can tell. Seriously. And did did y'all did, did y'all just see the video of him running the running the forty today? He was running in the, the gym. Running the 40? In the gym, did y'all see that? I did not see that. That's old. That's before the. Uh, that, 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 that was before that. He ran the like two three years ago. Yeah. Like bro, oh, wow. see so see see. How fast did he? What was his listen, 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 oh, listen. Like see, seven. see, and don't you start, <laughs> Mr. Producer, sir, <laughs> behind the camera. Look, look. Who in this room? Okay, look, y'all brothers done play football and stuff. I yeah, ran track. Okay. Right, you ran, ran track, track, right? Yeah, you know, ran you ran track, track right? Yeah. Yeah. When you run the 40 and stuff like that, they put you on like an official clock or a laser or something right. like that. Yeah. Something. Uh -huh. There's no phone stopwatch. <laughs> no person that's played athletics is going to believe a phone stopwatch. See, I hey, look. Uh, play with and, him today. And, 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 when I saw, and when I saw the video of him running that 40, I was just like, oh, so you ain't done no hard drugs. <laughs> So you ain't done no hard drugs. <laughs> it's the lack And then somebody somebody with a cell phone stopwatch thing turned to look, there we go. Four 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 seven. Look at that. See, I'm <laughs> done. I'm what if he really did? Alright. Well I Well look. Short people tend to be fat. Alright. 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 The leprechaun was fast in that movie. Oh, yes. Shit. He had the flintstone feet. There you go. So now, him. now we know. Now. He probably really did run it. He might. Have, no, All no. right, that ain't the only funny thing that's coming out of it either. <laughs> Cause now, now, now you got Ricky Smiley setting up his camera to fix his coffee so he can cry. Why was he, he was crying? crying? Oh, and I heard he Ricky was Smiley. Stuttering. What was that about? He was stuttering real bad. I mean, he, he was, was stuttering. Trying to explain himself. But why was it, he crying? I don't know. I don't know. Why, why did you set up the phone to, to make fix your coffee and cry? And cry. <laughs> that's the way I'm at. Like, He's done a lot hey, of man. different things. Like, what we doing all right now? Yo. I'm going to tell y'all right now. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. Oh, Lord. Okay? We, we know. We know. Yeah. No, yeah. no, for real. You know, like, that internet is a hell of a drug. Yeah, it is. It is. Like, that's what's a hell of a drug. That internet is a hell and of a drug, a, and bro. And it's addictive. Like, because yeah. even, like, just for instance, Cat Williams even proved a point. That's why I was tripping off the interview too on this because I was like, man, this dude is smart because he's proving a point right here by doing this. He talked junk about everybody who Shannon Sharp knew, and some of them, he, some people he called friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I couldn't sit in the interview. Like you said, you were a fan of Last Few Hits, my podcast, me and Darren. Mm -hmm. I couldn't sit in the interview with nobody and let nobody talk junk about Darren the way the cat talked about some of the people mm -hmm. who Shannon calls friends. And he was proving a point right there that, look, people do anything for clicks, likes, that internet, that whatever. Because at the end of the day, Shannon, you don't need the money, bro. Nope. Like you're a retired Hall of Famer from the NFL, like so you ain't got to sit up. You ain't got to let nobody sit in front of you and just dog your friends like that, you know. And, and he also said they, they they all don't come to his house or nothing like that. And Earthquake is the the one that's his man's <coughs> and that who he talked to he the most. Earthquake. And he said Earthquake could read. read. At least I would have sat there and been like, my homeboy can read. Like you ain't about to sit there and say my man, my man can't read. Like you Cam, what I'm like Cam he was telling the actual truth. And he and Shannon, like, look, this is my platform. Okay, I'm going to allow people to speak their mind. I can't just let defend. Me, no, no, let, no. Let, 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 let me see I don't know. He could have had that mind. Earthquake was in the military, and he was over. Uh, 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 he had to pass. He said he, so said he was right. over. Uh, yes, he did. A, um, nuclear bombs. They're not gonna put a dummy. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Over nobody that's uh, he, he got a control. So that's what I'm bombs. saying. Some of that stuff was jokes, but I did want to say this back to what he just said. What Osama just said. Mm -hmm. What did Fabulous say? Why somebody feel comfortable talking to you about me? He said that in a rap song. Like I can't I can't quote Damn. that bar. But if they feel comfortable enough to talk bad to you about me, and I'm supposed to be their peoples, what do they say? But was like it bad you can't or was talk. It the truth? No, we what no, what know. he's saying is, how you gonna sit over here and talk bad about Shannon Sharp's people right. in front of him and he not check you? 
Where is the G in that at? Because I think well, if I <laughs> if I were to think like how Shannon would would think, and first of all, this is my show, and I, I've all if he promotes his show to people in a way of you can speak your mind. Mm -hmm. We don't know when the cameras went off if he checked Cat about certain things, but I get his point too as well. Why didn't you check him right then and there? Like what you said, that's and by check, I don't even mean it has to be a problem. Yeah, I don't no. mean it that. You understand what I'm saying? It, it ain't right, got to be a problem. The way people think he would. Yeah, they think be. he got to be aggressive in any way. Like no, no, like no, no skip, no skip. Yeah, no. we see, we saw, we saw more on about. You understand what I'm saying? So yeah, you no. see more on that no. show, undisputed. So what yes. I was saying is, Cam checked Charleston for everything he, he said the, you just, about Dion. You see what I'm That's saying? Cam, he was, Cam, Cam did. Yeah, you know, he, he was, was like, like, "Nah, you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna talk about my man like that." So even if it's a light check. You still gonna stand up for your people, yeah, yeah. and you know maybe they're really that's not all. friends as much as people. You know, people throw around I mean, that friends. And I mean, the truth hurts. <laughs> Do it though. Uh huh. Because a lot of people they don't, don't live. Like now, now that's why I think Ricky Smiley set that camera up, and make that coffee. So I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, because he because the truth hurts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one felt no nothing for Ricky. Nobody feel who what? I mean, I, mean, I do. I, did I, I can't bash the man. They made the boys in the hood. Ricky, Ricky. That Boy, they they that's so right said right. they killing them right now. They, they killing them. They killing some Ricky. But I'm not surprised. Well, well I'm not surprised that Ricky I mean, Smiley did. did that because I've watched him do some things last year that kind of blew my mind pertaining to some personal matters he had pertaining to his, his son. son. And I just was like, first thing you did was grab your phone and you wanted to tell every. I just don't think, me personally, I just looked at that like, okay, mm -hmm. you, you didn't have to do that. But like you said, that internet, internet of fool, ain't it? Well, fool. That internet of fool, them, ain't it? They have to share everything. everything. Wow. And then it comes across fake. You don't seem like, for real, did I meet you in person? And I'm like, yo. I never, I never believe anybody on the internet who mm -hmm. get on the internet and start crying. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, because well, they had to set that camera up, bro. They had to set, set it up. It up. You understand what I'm saying? And then you got on and you started crying for, mm -hmm. for pretty much for clicks, man. Yep. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Now I, don't, I, can, now I can see some shit happen. I don't never believe that. The damn, you know, within the interview that causes him to the the, the the click. I mean, to start crying, but the nigga just. He didn't say nothing. He was just staring at coffee and then just busted out. And it's one thing to be on camera already and you interviewing or something or something or something's going on, whatever, and y'all go to a subject and it make you feel a certain way and you may get a that's that's something totally different. But that man had the camera up and he's fixing coffee. And then all of a sudden goes off camera and start crying. I was just like, Man, come on, man. Uh, like, come man. on, man. Jesus, okay, off that's depressing ass shit. Um, let me uh <laughs> 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 So with with your performance, your comedy performance, mm -hmm. where are you performing at? Have you been on Wild and Out? What like what what's what's next and what's going on with you? With um, that? I tried Wild and Out years ago, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. years ago, years ago, years ago. Had an audition, great audition. Got a call back before I even got out of the state of New York. Got a call, got my got an email to come back within like you know the next weekend. Had a second uh. Audition didn't make it, mm -hmm. didn't make, didn't get picked rather, and after that, that was like my second time going on like a little like a TV audition or whatever, mm -hmm. and so I was kind of tired of that. So I just said, I'll just, I mean, I'll make a way. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So no, no, no wilding out for me. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, right now, I currently uh, travel and feature for uh, Chico Bean mm -hmm. on his personal mm -hmm. tour. That's what's up. So and uh, you ever thought about going into acting? I thought about it. Yeah, I thought about it. I thought about it. Uh, thought about that a lot. But you usually got to go somewhere else. North Carolina is really not a spot for that. You usually got to like go to Atlanta or go to New York or go to L.A. and all that. But in in my case, I got a like I got a family. You know what I'm saying? So while I was chasing my dream of comedy, I'm also raising children, and I don't want to miss a lot of what they got going on. So it's like a trade off. Like, yeah, yeah, I want to go uh, pursue acting, but I will one day. My daughter's a senior now in high school. She runs track. So when okay. she graduates and she gets into school, I may jump out and go travel and try to do some of that right now. But it meant more to me to see those those th those times of their life yeah. than to be gone. I'm already gone enough traveling doing comedy. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, And when I'm going doing comedy, when my son was playing football in high school, when he played in college, if I missed the game, I was like, ah. Like, it hurt me to miss that stuff. You understand what I'm saying? So... Like, it meant more to me to be there for that than to go chase the dream as much. Because I still chased it, 
but mm-hmm. I chased it within reasons yeah, to yeah, my the, to my family yeah, living. You still had to yeah live mm-hmm. up to to those responsibilities. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, wow, mm-hmm. that sounds like me and you, right? <sighs> Chase hey, rap. Hey, that's real. That's got real. Got kids man. and had to fall back. Had to put yeah. school first. That's put real. yeah. Because a lot of like I see that a lot. You know, All the time. I see that a lot nowadays. Like people think it's supposed to happen today. No, it everything did. supposed to happen today. Damn. Like no, nah, like when I told you, well, I when some I instant grits. Kids, you understand right? what I'm saying? Like when I told you, I worked at Food Line. I worked at Food Line as a cashier. Like I was at the I was at the cash I was at the cash register. Making jokes and telling jokes to people who was coming through buying groceries. Mm-hmm. Every day I That's would go in. Story. Every day I would go in and make a different name tag with a different name that sounded <laughs> crazy. Like I would have names like this is one of my favorite, Traymond Darius. <laughs> Dang on. Traymond. Like one day I just put Fubu on my name tag. Like it was just different <laughs> crazy names. And the customers, it got to the time, it got to the point where customers would come in every day and they'd be like, and they would come through my line just to see what my name tag name was gonna be oh. that day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But that was my A. That was my that was my job A, you know it was part time and dang on landscaping was my other job A. Then I started doing comedy. I worked my A till my B started making me more money than my A. Mm-hmm. Then I went to food line and was like, uh, take me off. Can I take? Can you take me off the schedule a couple of days? Because we started doing comedy shows in colleges and whatnot. And when I get a check from a college and it started being more than my food line check. I was like, all right, food line, it's time for you to take a little back dough. Oh, no, wow. You know what I'm saying? And then when radio came along, they was like, nah, you ain't gonna, you don't, we don't want you to work anywhere else. Mm-hmm. And from that point on, it was just radio and comedy. It was entertainment. I was like, I'm here now. That's dope. That's dope. That's dope. Yeah. So how's it, like, <laughs> how's it like to work with Roxy in the morning? Rock. Just getting up that damn early. Because I was like, y'all be up early than a motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Roxy, she, she the general. Like, she... uh. She is, uh, she's super dope. She's been in the radio game longer than I have, number one. And, uh, number two, she's just, like, if, like, like, she runs the board and also, like, other morning shows and stuff that y'all listen to, like, you know, Steve Harvey, Ricky Smiley, whatever, what have you, all these syndicated shows, they actually got engineers and stuff moving the buttons and working the buttons and recording the calls and doing this and screening calls and all that. First of all, we have no call, no call screeners, mm-hmm. like, Roxy's on that side of the board. She's running the board, taking calls, recording them in between, you know, songs and all that. Yeah. And having and having time to cut the call up and edit it before we play it back for y'all. Oh, damn. Wow. So when I say she is the general, like I really do mean that. She is super dope at what she does. And like when it was like I know the show is entitled Drank on the Work Rocks. That's called that's just entitled. That's cause no. it just rolls off no, better than rocks on the drink. That's dope. And that's just a play off the drink and the rocks, cause you know you right. put ice and drink. It's mm-hmm. just a play off of it. But for real, for real, that show don't move without Roxy. Uh, like it don't it don't at all. Like Shout she she's super out. dope. I probably have to say this question for her uh, once we get her on here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but uh when when she was with uh B Dot. Mm-hmm. Uh, coming in, I mm-hmm. remember her coming in with B dot there. What she's also doing it then? Three Live Crew when we were Three Live yeah, Crew. Yeah, right. What, what no, no. When we were Three Live Crew, it was like Dot was the like head of the show. Right. You I know that, that he did that part. He did that part. So when it, when the mic when you crack the mic open when it, when the mic was cut on every time you hear the mic come up you hear his voice first. You know what I'm right. saying? Because he was over there. Okay. Like, I guess he was my the question gym. was he was, was she doing the engineering then? No, 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 okay. no, no, no. He was doing it then. Oh, oh okay. like when I say other radio stations have engineers and stuff, they have them for like like they have that those them those folk there to you know just work and do just for that. We don't have no. They just put time. Nobody out. has that for any show. Like no, we oh, wow. we are everything. We are and the, everything. And the creativity is so so commendable. That's all. My us. God, y'all are wonderful. Like That's I was um, talking to you about the thoughts, parational quotes, mm-hmm. and the slap. That's that get me through my morning. Boom. How did y'all come up with that, or how did you come up with that? Um, with Thoughtspiration, thir- Thoughtspirational Thursdays. That's just that just came about for me. Just <laughs> just reading people's crazy stuff. They just wake up in the morning and say on Facebook mm-hmm. or throughout the week. You know what I mean? People just they get up and they post little crazy memes. And sometimes it'd be just crazy stuff that people say themselves. Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, man. And I just came up with the aspirational quotes. You know, we needed something on Thursday. We needed a bit on Thursday. Mm-hmm. The aspiration, you know. And it kind of thought the aspiration was kind of play off of throwback Thursday. You know what I'm saying? So the aspirational Thursday. Mm-hmm. And, you know. You get one that's like truly memorable that you'll never forget. Mm. 
No, I don't. You don't. They, they I really don't. All, it, it's hilarious. I really don't. It's so many. I really don't. It's so many. I really don't. Like Cleavon is just like he a crazy dude, and he's so like he's so yeah. he's so improv. So yeah, so you know what I'm saying. A, is that a uh, character you came up with? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's dope. And the slap. So y'all just wake up in the morning slapping motherfuckers like bam yeah. bam. Was well, basically <laughs> like they call up. Yeah. Yeah, like that's just a. Do you want to slap the day? Throughout the throughout the radio game, every like, even from back in the day, there's always been you know bits and shows where people have callers call up and you know, just call somebody out for something or something like that. So mm -hmm. that was just I play off of it. Slap session Wednesday, Wednesday. You know what I'm saying? A way it. that people can call up, get their frustrations out on somebody. And not go do something physically, you know what I'm saying? That's right, that's right. Every day I wake up, I want to just slap the hell out of what I do for a living. But um, yeah. Now you will end up in a mess of health program after this. So too, um, I know y'all uh, as a station like to be in the be in the community. Yeah. And stuff like that. How do you like how do you like being in the community and reaching out and doing fun things like how y'all do? I I love it. Like, um, and are there some ideas that you want to do? We say it, we say it on the radio all the time, but we really do mean it. Like, we aren't us if y'all ain't y'all. Like the people they wake up and they cut us on, and that's what make us who we are. So, when I'm out and with the people, you know, it's always a pleasure because these are the people that pay me. Let's go. Yeah, because if I if I didn't have no ratings and I we we didn't do well, they. You know, they we wouldn't be we, I wouldn't be here to this to this point. You know what I mean? They would have been done, fired us, and y'all would be listening to the Breakfast Club or something right. or something or something like that. Nobody wants to listen to Charlemagne. But you know, <laughs> but that's what uh, we feel like. That's what gives us an advantage to those shows, like you know your Ricky Smiley's and your your Steve Harvey's and your you know your Breakfast Clubs and all that and all that because they're not here. Yeah. Like they don't know. Day. Like they don't. They don't know every day. Nah, they don't see. They don't. They don't know how we living. Like oh. and and stuff like that. So right. so I love, I love cool, I love they can't address nothing around here. They can't. That's you know, only thing the only thing they can address is you know. It just brings me back to Krishan and Blueface. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Give Krishan a break, okay? <laughs> Krishan is a young lady that is going through trials and tribulations, and I, I'm rooting for Krishan. There's other there's there's uh, there's other young black women you can root for. I, 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 there is. There <laughs> There's but, other black women you can root for. I know. They really have a better situation going on. They, they, really, they do. Come but on. No, hold on. Let me be really serious here because, like, I get she makes a lot of wrongs, and there's a lot of things that Krishan can do differently. But, but I just think, I think in about five to ten years, everybody will be like, wow. But I'm gonna tell you the truth about that. I love her. So? I love her. I sincerely love her. And I've been asking him for the longest time. Can I do a prayer for her? Because like, I want to do a prayer that can reach. The masses for that girl because mm -hmm. there are I, other yeah there are other but, young black women you can save them prayers for listen, and you can pray. I, I get what you're saying, but it's pieces of that little girl that reminds and me of all myself. of us. Uh, of all black women, to be honest with you, because yes. all of us have had to deal with some level of pains that that little girl is <laughs> very very Excuse familiar me. with, and because Excuse she was great at one point. She was great at was. track. I mean, mm -hmm. like oh, I fucking ridiculous again, at football. Yeah, like, she's phenomenal. She's the girl she's, no she's a beast. She's the reason Blueface is whatever he is yeah. because that her is personality, crazy. even her antics. I, I'm not even gonna get into all that yeah. Blueface stuff. I mean, yeah. I, I, I disagree yeah. with what you just said, okay. but I ain't gonna get into it because I don't like to talk about them too much. Because I'd be like, oh, that's ignorance. Yeah, they but, are. But they, but they he, are but, but he had bust down Thadiana and all that before he had before. So I mean, she didn't make. I mean, he did. He did. He did. He did. He did have all. I don't remember that song. I mean, hey. No, the, I the, kids it. the kids loved 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 it. He became loved it. more popular because from their relationship. Yeah, and I just think there's a lot of things, like you said, that she has gone through. It's just that her stuff is out in the media. Everybody has a cousin, Chris Sean, an auntie, Chris Sean. But that's not our fault. That's out that in the media. Went, right. That's yeah. that. That's her own yeah. doing. And and I totally get that. But if you really think about it, there's somebody in somebody's family that it's just images like Chris Sean. It's yeah. just that hers is just out there. I just say give her about five or ten years, she won't be just like how Whitney. Everybody talks trash about Whitney being with Bobby. Then when, when Whitney came around and she had to clear some things up and that relationship was all crazy and you know and you just move on. I, but I feel where you're coming from too. 
But it, it yeah, was, you brought up Whitney as a point Whitney. to prove your point. It was what Whitney. I was trying and to say. <laughs> is she, it was Whitney. And I, you brought up Whitney to prove your point. What I'm talking about was, was the craziness. Everybody thought, everybody thought it was Whitney Bobby. and Bobby. Abby. What they went through amongst themselves, like when they had their own show. So. And I mean, she was. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, how off the crack? Like, <laughs> and you're like, oh God, that's Whitney. You know what I mean? Like, Whitney has some. She's another one that should have been on Lexa Pro. I'm trying to tell you. No. You can she, see their antics. They need medication. She, I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> okay, keep hey, playing. Hey, once you once, you get, once uh-huh. you get going off that internet drug, man, that, you'll do anything and everything true. to chase uh-huh. that next high of the internet. But reality has to come at some point for some people. <laughs> You don't think so? No, just look, 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 look how, look how it all go down. Prime example, prime example. And we were just, cause we were just talking about this <laughs> off the air. Me and Rockwood the other day, Tamar Braxton, beautiful oh, voice, beautiful God. voice, very talented. But guess what? I'm telling y'all all right now, she done got bit with the internet drug. It's all drama and shenanigans from here on out. Yeah. Sorry. It does come. Vince, does come. Sorry. Vince it, control. It, 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 sorry. Vince control that part of her life now that she's not with Vince who was more stable more concrete Vince didn't want her Vince wanted a white Vince woman that but no but, but what I'm telling you is sometimes people have handlers and even though that was her husband he was able to handle her antics now she with this white boy and he just as foolish as she is I think Tamar needs to go sit on someone's couch Tamar has some issues yes, I she know does. she can sing I love Tamar I love the Vince and Tamar show family whatever that was called back then yeah but when it comes to Tamar Tamar needs, in my opinion, she needs to stop dating and she needs to date herself. Yeah. Because I think Tamar, she really dated herself the way she dated these men. She's not going to like herself. The most problem with most women, I'm going to speak on women. Women, a lot of women can't be by themselves because they don't like themselves. I had to learn to like myself. Mm, Okay. I'm trying to tell you they don't like themselves. So they rather push that stuff off on everybody else. else, And then you add the internet in there. You got to know yourself. You need to go back to your childhood. Why are you acting like this? Like me, I'm, I, I, Mm -hmm. so I'm a very aggressive person when need be. Mm -hmm. And I can flip real quick. Right. Mm -hmm. But when I started sitting down with myself and going through therapy, I was like, I wouldn't want to date somebody like me because mm-hmm. I never know if it's going to be up or down if you say something to me sideways. That's right. But I learned that was from going up in a household of chaos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Tamar needs to go sit at Tamar. So check this. Go date yourself. <laughs> so check this. Uh-huh. While Tamar go date yourself, uh, PTSD. Mm. How do you feel about that? And and, and is that uh, it it's has real. it grown an alarming rate in our community? It has. Um, I mean, I know it's real. It's real. That's really that's really the only thing I can say about it. You know what I mean? And I really I really don't understand how a lot of, you know, a lot of black folk really don't have it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because like for real, what other people call trauma. And like you say, like, and would be, you know, just afraid and taken back and all that is everyday life to us. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> like, no, for real. Yeah. Like, we hear gunshots off off in the distance mm-hmm. and we don't jump. We don't get down on the ground. We don't know. We'd be like, dang, they shooting over there. Like, what? Mm-hmm. No, we'll yeah. say, well, what the hell was that? Was that a 45? Yeah. Or yeah, they over there. Boom. And, yeah, and, and in, some, in some cases, you know, people start trying to see what it meant. That sounds like well, they had that thing. Like, people start. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? So, yeah. like, I'm surprised that a whole lot. Of uh, you know, black folk and you know, people of color mm-hmm. don't have you know, and some probably do don't even know it. You and know I was what I mean? Going to say that. Yeah, a lot of a lot of um, when I went on my journey of understanding the issues I had and didn't even know I had PTSD. Mm-hmm. I mean, when I tell my stories, like you said, people are like, "Wow, you talking about you saying that like it's normal." You watch somebody get ran over back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and then the girl just pulled off and spun his body around. I was like, "Yeah, having Halloween night," mm-hmm. and I start making jokes about it, mm-hmm. and then I start talking about you know being in inner city Philadelphia, watching people get shot, watching people shoot up the movie theaters while we in it, and I'm telling this to people, and they really look at me like, "Yo, your life," and I'm. Thinking, well, what was your life? Because this is normal. What's up? This is this is normal to me until it started coming over into my life, and I and I started when you have PTSD, 
everything will put you on edge. Like, just like earlier when we were interviewing the other guy. That ambulance, cop car, oh yeah, my brain goes straight into, oh Lord, I'm about to be back down at 201. Did I do something wrong? Let me get in this car and drive like I got some sense. You know what I'm saying? It, it triggers something in you of awareness in a weird way. Mm -hmm. You know, even when you go out, like, and most people think this is a guy thing. It's not a guy thing for me. I do not like my back towards any door. So if I go on wow. a date with you, we both sitting facing the door, we gonna be side <laughs> by side. Cause let me tell you, I keep my head on me, and I'm <laughs> you might get hit. Yeah. So to what Ricardo was saying, it, ain't even, is it real. ain't even it ain't even that. It's post traumatic slave disorder. That which too. We all Ooh. have. So yeah. it's That's not true. even post traumatic. Yeah. Whatever the white people definition of the mm -hmm. word is, it's the post traumatic slave, slave disorder. disorder, and. And it's deep. You can look that up. That's the title Damn. of a book. Yeah. yeah. You can look it, it up. It, but yep. that's what we all really do suffer from. It's, and it's generation from generation from generation. Yeah. But what made you ask him about yeah, PTSD? PTSD? Because. Well, because, uh, because for one. I thought it was because his name, Osama. Well, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, the reason I asked you that is because I know you deal with the community a lot on a day to day basis. Yeah. And most of your. Jokes and all that stuff comes from that. Yeah, it comes from that. Um, wh what whether you realize in, it or you know? not, yeah, you get what I'm saying. And um, and I was, I, I just, I kind of, I kind of wanted you to more elaborate on it because it, I mean, is that where you found your? Is funny. that where you reached to to to? To, to, to come up with your jokes and mm -hmm. shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Or is it or is it just it. it just naturally comes to you like that? Or is that how you get through um, your because problems? because I know we, I, we I see guess. it every day, man. Just like I I mean I, I grew up in Boston we grew up in Boston mm -hmm. Project or right up the street from it. And I remember me and my sister walking up the street one day and there's a crackhead coming over the hill and some damn skis. <laughs> Skiing down the damn street, drunk the fuck up. I swear to God, I'm correct. And I was like, this, is, this shit right here ain't nothing but Winston right here. Oh my Only God. in Winston Salem, you're going to see some shit like that. Only in Winston. Because it hardly, I mean, you know, we hardly, we hardly get to get snow as is. It has skis on. And this nigga, where the fuck he get some skis from? We in North Carolina, B. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. it be shit like that, you know, I mean, that you can make. A joke out of yeah, that, that's where my jokes come from from life. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? That's one thing. Um, I mean, if you and if you think about it, when you think about black comedians, like we're all like from state to state, city to city, like our neighborhoods are pretty much the same. You know, there, there's different slang, there's different, but if, as far as living and how how stuff go, it's pretty much the same. You know what I'm saying? So we all get our jokes. From just the the lives we've lived, mm. and the people we've come across, and the things that we've seen in the hood, and yada 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 and yada yada yada, and you were just speaking about PTSD. I don't know if I call it PTSD. I don't exactly. I don't even know exactly what to call it. But I couldn't be myself at home. Like my dad, like my dad used to get on me when I'd be joking around and playing too much. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? He'd be like, you always joking and all the other blah blah blah. So when I got to school. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, to let go. yeah, I, yeah. I like I would actually, be, I would literally be a be a class class clown. You know, so and I mean, I wouldn't call it PS PS uh, PSD PS PTSD. I would just say like that was just my outlet when I got to school. You know, if you gave me if you gave me an audience, yeah, that was it. It was going down. You know what I'm saying? So that's where it all came. It started in school, man. Ratting sessions, all that. Yeah, and just getting just. Being disruptive and getting sent to the office with a referral. Yeah, just <laughs> stuff like that. You know what? That's one thing these kids don't know how to do. And his cousin do it well. Oh, Lord. Oh, my God. Rat. These children don't know how to rat. They don't know how to take a joke. They, they don't know how to. That's what y'all call it, rat. Very you know, we used sensitive. to call it rat. And yeah, we used to call it rat. Uh oh. Well, yeah, that's what we're picking on each other. Yeah. Or well, calling the, what is it, playing the dozens? Yeah. yeah. Oh, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Joking. What's all of that? Joseph. <clears throat> Jones, Jones, and Jones, and Jones, and Jones, and Jones. I ain't never heard ratting used as a yeah. term. Oh, to we joke on so people. Oh. I guess that's a win. That, that was snitching yeah, for us. Yeah, yeah, like you ratting on somebody that you snitch. Nah, well, nah, damn, it, 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 did I mean that? Did I just have a?
have a blonde moment? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, no, we used red into. We did, yeah. we did, yeah. we did. But I mean, it was it was on the norm, so we weren't even really thinking about thinking about it. As That's snitching. because their yeah. skin is so thin; like everything triggers them. And another thing is, they don't know how to fight. Like they quick to pull a gun. Like, come on, anybody can shoot a gun. I mean, but can you really rock somebody with your hands? Like. And I'm not saying violence, I'm not saying it's okay for violence. But what I'm saying is that sometimes violence can happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. And are you willing or can you take a hit? A lot of these young men and young girls can't take a hit. That, that's an, cause think about it. When we was growing up, we ain't had nobody putting their phone. Oh, you got not fucked up. Oh, it's all on the internet. Mm -hmm. That was, you You might have heard it when you got back to school that day. And then mm -hmm. they talked about it maybe the next grade. And then that was that. But now it, that crap goes all across the internet. So that embarrassment for them is a whole nother level. So I think that's another reason why they can't handle their skin is too thin. They also have to be in the house all the time. They, you know what I mean? I, like, I wouldn't. Um, I'm so glad I, I came up in the times I came up in. Easy. Because unless you were there, you didn't know. Mm -hmm. Unless you were there, you you didn't know. Like these kids got so much to deal with when you talk about this internet and these phones and stuff like that. Because for real, for real, like if your child is timid, because no, I mean, no, I was about to say because because my kids, they didn't, I didn't allow them to get on the internet like that. Till they were in high school. Okay. Okay. Mm. Right now, you got parents who have ch who are children who have phones, and they're eight years old, they're nine mm -hmm. years old, they're ten years old, and there is no. You know. Yeah. And if you ask me, there's more adult influence on the internet than there is child influence. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? And it's the World Wide Web for a, re a reason. Everything under the sun is uh, is out there. You understand what I'm saying? And you have these kids with these phones and this internet, and they're seeing all these adult influences and things like that. Why you think? Why you think you got eight, nine, and ten year olds with? With the baby hairs and stuff like that, that's for grown women, if you ask me. Yeah. It is. Like why you like, like why you think you got you know kids in middle school with lashes and stuff? That's for grown folk, if you ask me. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of you know it's just a lot of influence and stuff they got out here. Like we know when we were coming up, man. Double edged sword. Yeah, yeah. The only influence we had, we were coming up. That was TV. And then your parents were high. And your then eyes at twelve, that shit cut off. Remember that? Word, word. You know, you know. The lions saying? came up. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, 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 but oh, first, the American no flag. The internet, that just then, keeps going. It's it's it's, it's totally yeah, it's crazy. Nonstop. And then and then you have like this youth has to deal with adults who predators. That I mean, I'm just adults who you know still want to be children. They want attention too. Like they putting guns in these kids' hands and stuff like that. You understand what I'm saying? Like they like yeah. it's it's just a lot of adult influence on these kids these days, man. And that's yeah. rough. Did you did you talk about that? About see? the little girls that was hands on your knees? Did you talk about that? That um the little video that the, went viral. No, nah, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Oh even, no, I that didn't, was another guy. But I know. Oh, I heard I about that video, but I didn't even see it. I didn't uh -huh. even see I it. I, I didn't even go to see it. But I saw it. I ain't even commented on it. I said I would have been swinging two goddamn belts off and up in that motherfucker. Yeah, and aunties ridiculous. and mamas could have got it too. That's just yeah. hard. Well, like I, that, that, that's what I, mm. what he's saying. Same thing I'm saying. I'm just, I'm, I'm phrasing, phrasing it a little different. You're dealing with grown people that want attention more than the children. Yeah. The grown people are acting like they attention deprived. So, oh, this is good. Hold on. So, speaking on that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> mm -hmm. We, we're playing this stuff on the radio. Now, even the entertainers, hands on your knee. Mm -hmm. So, man, that sounds like some elementary chat shit that we use for, for the kids, right? Like a, Head, the kids, shoulders, knees, right? and toes. Right. So, and then, but they putting it explicit. And then, so now, here come the monster. Well, y'all got to play specific songs. All day and day, and it's on rotation. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? Because it's really, it's really taken away from the DJ. You know what I'm saying? We're playing songs and shit like that. I know this might be, you know, detrimental to your job. But no, it's not. I mean, I speak I, my mind as far as when it comes to that. How do you like, feel about that? Because is it an agenda going on? Yes, with that. A, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's an agenda, uh, an agenda going on. But people like to call. It's your local radio station, so I get it. You're gonna call us. We're 102 Jams. We're the hip hop radio station, so we're gonna want, we're gonna be the ones that get your phone call because you know you're local here, and this is the radio station that you're listening to. But best believe it's not just here. 
Like that's across that's across the world, that's across the nation. Like right. yes, there is an agenda. Right. There is an agenda. Like that that's why that's why all the music that you hear is getting played. There's an agenda. Like music moves shit. You know what I'm saying? Like music, like just think about our childhood. Like we used to get our style and stuff for music. Mm -hmm. You know, we like we started cutting steps in our head because we saw Scoob and Scrap them with steps right. in their head, and you know we started doing the dot thing. Kwame yeah, had Kwame. the dot and yep. the polka dots, and the, you know, so so that's how we got our style and stuff and all that. So, man, as far as the music goes, that's yes, and it's, it's an agenda. It is, but. To be honest with you, that's what the majority want to hear. Because if that if that wasn't, how come why why are why are these songs so hot? They're all hot. I didn't make them hot. You know, the, uh, my, our music director at the station didn't make them hot. You know, the people made them hot. That's I'm, so that's you know that's the agenda. Like they like stuff moved through music, man. It's always been I that way. I don't think it's the radio station's fault. Because if you remember, there was, I forgot that woman's name back in the day that made sure they put that um, parental advisory on CDs. I'm talking about this was like in the 90s. Mm -hmm. I think are gone the days oh, yeah, of oh, people oh. saying, parents saying, Damn, turn that off, you can't yeah. listen to that. Like Maxine that song's Waters. too Maxine grown. Waters. Yeah. So it's like you don't have these parents saying, oh, no, you can't listen to that. Because they think, oh, look, that's cute, <laughs> like what you're saying. But see, when I, and, and people, like people, like I said, people, well, my kids no, it was no. You gonna turn it off? Like we're That's not, right. we're not listening to that. And I think it's because you can't put everything on, like the radio station or the record labels. When are the parents gonna be a parent and get up and say, no, you not mm -hmm. listening to that? No, you not watching that movie? I remember when my mom used to cover my eyes when certain <laughs> scenes was getting ready to come up. You don't have that no more because the internet's everywhere. That parental advisory little sticker, they might as well start putting that mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. On anything. anything, on anything, they because it's, it's they, null and void now. It's null, it's null and void now. You made a good point when you said that right there, because that's just that's. If you ask me, that's what's different now. You know, the parenting and stuff like that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Parenting. I was just telling, I was talking to Roxy about it one day, and you know, I was telling her how it's the parenting because, like, my mama didn't go get her hair done every every two weeks because she sacrificed. For us, mm -hmm. and I'm not. Sac I'm not. When I say sacrifice, I'm not just talking about clothes and shoes and food. I'm talking about she sacrificed that stuff so we could be involved in programs. We could go to the YMCA. Mm -hmm. We could be involved in you know in sports and all this other stuff so that we're not doing other stuff. And you know, my father didn't go get a cut every other because it ain't just about mothers going to get their nails done. My my father didn't go get a cut. He didn't buy Nikes and tennis shoes every every month or every he sacrificed so that we could have and do. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Because that's what it's not about just having. It's about also doing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, you may be working and putting your kid in these nice Nikes and whatever, whatever. But what do they do? Yeah. Like, what well, what programs do you have them in? What are, and you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and uh, and. Like these days, a lot of people are letting that phone and that internet raise their child instead yeah. of, you know, like because there's no reason for a child under, you know, if you're not in middle school or so, so because there's a lot going on, you know, in middle school, high school, and whatnot. There's under that, you don't need no phone. What you need a phone? What you need a phone for? You're in elementary. I know where you are. <laughs> so, so, if I need yeah. to come get you, I'm right. gonna get you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? And stuff like that. So like, it's the like the parent. I feel like the parenting is the thing. Like you know, like boom. For instance, when NWA came out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Me and my brother, we got the tape. We snuck and got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Had to sneak. We, now. We had, had now, to now sneak. you had now that's when you had to sneak because like you say, that parental advisor was on there and you had to know somebody or, or something. You had to, I mean, okay. We were playing that thing one time in the room. Boy, she came in there and said, if y'all she told us if I ever hear that again, I'm throwing it away. And she was letting us know right then. Like you can listen to it, but you better not, I better not hear it. Mm -hmm. You understand? Which that also let us know that, you know. The respect level. The respect level of it. And, you know, like, and it also, in our mind, it also let us know, like, yo, this is just music. It's just entertainment. And it's not really real. But right. they think it's real. A big problem now with this, like, man, they don't understand that whoever you listening to, do you think they would out here be rapping right now if they just caught a body? Mm -hmm. Do you think they'd be touring the, street, touring the streets, doing, so the authorities just letting them just ride on around, just... Catching bodies. 
Wow! Right, they building the case. You know on your what? Ass. The most, the most incredible thing from our generation. But no, they're not. From no, they're not. And but, 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 the, but the kids see that and they want to emulate sorry, it for some Bridget. reason. You yeah. know? No, no, no. I was just gonna say the most interesting thing from our generation is when we found out that Red Man had a degree and that Method Man went to college and that you know these people weren't dumb. That these people right. were really like about their business. When Master P did all the things that he did, marketing and promotion and stuff, it was so. Yeah, he could have went pro himself. Man. I have a theory about that too. Oh what? Mumble rappers. Mm-hmm. I have a theory that I, I have a theory that most of your mumble rappers didn't have any higher education. That's why they mumble rapping. You know what? Um, because they, because if, you, if, if you look at all your backpack rappers, they're you know your quote unquote backpack short. rappers. That's right, their vocabulary is short. All mm-hmm. your backpack rappers, man, their vocabulary is wide. So let me why? Because they yeah. had some type of higher education. Okay. Go back to Cat you, Williams. He uh, said the same thing. Watch this though. I was listening to Dr. Phil Valentine, um, and he's from the conscious community, mm-hmm. and he was talking about mumble rap, and he uh, uh, equated it to um, how black people used to hum back in slavery to keep you from knowing what they were saying, mm-hmm. but other black people could, like designer. When designer came out, now I'm 43 years old, but when he got the Timmy Timmy Turner, I knew everything that was going on with Timmy Timmy Turner. Even the little humming, like I could feel it in my spirit. So sometimes I think that with, with us and, and the post traumatic slave mm-hmm. <laughs> disorders that we have, mm-hmm. it seeps into our music, it seeps into us unconsciously. And sometimes that humming or that seems like we're being ignorant it's not it's it's the pain it's the trauma and it's trying to relate it and get it out and express it but we don't have the words to really explain the depths of the pain that we've been through so that's something I you know what i ain't got the words why no higher education. Okay. But, all right. But, but you sit up there giving took, them all that about saying. They took books out the school. Not, I my, my children don't. Well, my children are but, gone. But also, though. But they don't have books. It starts at home, though. But, you, you don't yeah. stop learning just no. because you walked out of school. So, like, I totally get your point on all of that. But mm-hmm. also, at the same time, who's teaching them at home? Because my daughter and her friends, I look at them and I'm like, yo, who raised you? Mm-hmm. Who raised TK? you? TK. Like, I be, <laughs> yeah, I'm I, so confused. Like, you gotta I have that catch too. Myself. You gotta well, have I'm gonna that tell you, the little girl came to my house and she said, yeah, cause Milani, that was getting worse, I cringed. I cringed. <laughs> Like when I tell you so bad that I cringed, I thought that I was going to break every bone you sound in like my an body. Educator. And I turned around, I said, "Baby girl, there's no thing called worser. It's worse. <laughs> it's worse. It's not worser. That's not a word." My, my daughter's like, "Mom, why are you always trying to teach? Because sh- if if her mama not going to tell her, I'm going to tell her. Because nine times out of ten, her mother it uses worser. Well, look, worse, sir. Well, look, and I, 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 to be honest with village. you, to be honest with you, I got three degrees and didn't know they worse or wasn't a word. So worse you just sir educated is me. Not a word. Right. Thank you, darling. Now I know yeah. because see, in my in my well, lexicon, she keeps saying stuff and I just keep opening my mouth like, girl, did you just say that? No, like I really said it you because the way that you, you thought no, worse was a word. Listen, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because the way me and my the way me and my community the way we talk. Sometimes it ain't on that higher level of oh I read this and I understand that. Sometimes it's just straight the fuck out, fuck like whatever. <laughs> however I said it, it's however you get it. It's worse, damn it. I understand that, but even, but even when people would say worse, you I still did. you still knew that I, was not a correct. No, that, that I, and I don't even give a shit. <laughs> What, well, that, 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 all of my degrees that, are in science, and I have a business administration degree as a master's degree, right? But I don't give it. I don't care. I'm not a, I'm not writing well I am writing books but I don't that's not plus I rap and so I come from a different place of how you write and how you express yourself and I would say worse so you okay so you would go into <laughs> I would said, go I would listen, go into no, no, my no, no, job no 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 Winston Salem State asked you to come over there and speak to the kids in the auditorium. And if I felt like saying worse, stop, 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 stop. Please mm-hmm. let me get it out. Okay. Not, not if you feel like saying it. Like you're sitting there and you're giving them your whatever your your note. You're saying you're speaking to them, and you know worse is in your dissertation or whatever you're giving or whatever. Okay. Instead of using worse, you're gonna say to them, and it was worser than the way you're gonna say that. Just like you're gonna say that. You know, depending, <laughs> I may. I well, may. Man, you, and I man, get what you're saying. Man, is man, that? Whoa, but is man, that good man, teaching? Go ahead, is that good teaching? You know what? I'm not gonna say it's bad teaching because who? Oh, this language right here. Who who wrote this language? Who said that Wursa was it? it maybe, is a in Africa, maybe, maybe in Africa. Maybe maybe in Africa there was a Wursa. Maybe where my people was from. <laughs> maybe if I'm an alien, maybe wherever there. I get it, but I'm. I'm, a, I'm all I'm saying is, I don't know what I mean. Who I'm, made it you, phonetically okay, but, incorrect? Uh, uh, to to defend her, it's and a they, lot of kids out here that say it. I'm I in know. the schools every day. 
And they say it, and I cringe and every time. Like it's, it's not like, a word. Like it's a normal word. I and get, it's not a word. It's I like get the it. But, but see, she's yeah. over there. She's what over there talking like the play, like the like the playing field is fair. No, and I know the plan. Our kids That's cannot be. Right. Our kids you cannot. You have to be able to change your hats when you're speaking. What he's saying is, our kids no, can't afford to be. Our kids can't afford to go out saying worse. Worse, right? And, and even bigger than that, our black professionals. We can't afford to have our black professionals even saying that to them, making them think that it's okay, okay. Because guess what? The playing field is not is fair. not fair. I was raised with my people telling me I got to be better mm-hmm. than mm-hmm. I got to be. Yeah. Because if you are right there on the same level as them, you're not going. Yeah. But see, watch this too. I was raised like that too, right? You got to be better than the best all the time. And I raised my kids like that. And you know what it did to my oldest too? It made them like, damn, you this pressure. I got to be better than the best. I got to be better than you. I got to be better than me. See, see, it, it, you're saying it, something totally different than what I'm no, saying. No, I mean, I'm just saying, it, I get what you're saying. I was speaking about the other side. The other side. You got to be better than you do because they can be, they can be uneducated. They can be slow. They can come from imp- impoverished situations and they can, they still have a leg up. I got you. But the only thing about it is. I think black people, in order to survive and to create our own norms, we have accepted a lot of things that are not correct or what they would deem as correct. Yes, it can make us look ignorant, but at the same token, rap made us look ignorant. And we took that and we made it make us millionaires and billionaires. So how bad? Was it to think outside of the box? I'm not saying do it. Please, y'all, don't do it. Don't ever say worse, sir. And any other word that's phonetically incorrect according to the uh, Webster Dictionary. However, however, damn, sometimes it's just creativity. Yeah, I mean, but you can isn't take it, creativity is, is, is and it, it can go too far. Did, I mean, you. Do we have an Ebonics? Uh, right, there is. There, there yeah. is an encyclopedia. Yeah. Yes, it is. I There's an ex- worse is in there. And, and it is. And, 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 and well, it is. You said it's, a, today, it's actually right called the Urban Dictionary, where you have. I mean, I've I've went down this whole thing with my kids, like. I was raised where you say what you say in this house, but when you step outside of this house, you better be able to change your hat. I can sit here and talk to y'all and talk about all types of crazy stuff I went through. But Mm -hmm. when I step on, I don't care what job it is. You won't hear me say worse. So you won't hear me say join. Yeah, I mean, you feel me cook. Like that's not coming out my mouth when I, even if I'm dealing with, uh, uh, I like to call what, them by what? Letters, I guess but Caucasians, mm-hmm. you know, the call the call the caucuses. When I speak to them, I speak with the English language that we know is correct. I can't first of all, we can't go back talking about we have heard what went on during slavery, but at the same time, our ancestors were thriving to get that to be able to read. They were dying because they were learning how to read. So with that said, I don't I just I just think that if you you should know how to speak when you're around certain a group of people that doesn't make you fake that lets you know you know how to maneuver through society and what you were saying about them the biggest trick in the book has always been that white people are smarter and let me and I'm not being mean I have to pee a hundred percent yeah I'm only 43 years old and I've been from Philadelphia to Florida ran track college here and back and was a dancer the biggest trick in the book is to make black folks think that white folks is smart and highly educated and i've come along come across a lot of dumb white people that have businesses yeah and i go wow really and the doctors that i work with say shit like this at the end of the day (laughs) girl we out here yeah, you see what I'm is, but is, I'm just saying. So the level, but, you know but, but I choose. get it. Do that you know no, no, no. Too. But this is we do. this. What I'm saying to you is this. <laughs> what did you just say? I said they do that around you. No, they, do, they that do that. Around. They do that around the boss. They do that around the white people. They doctors. We, uh, we're, mm. we're we're scientists. We, when, we say oh, okay. we say what the hell. We run clinical trials. They be like, we out here. Shout yeah, out to my buddy Azim. I love you, boy. But this but, is. Th- th- but this is my talk. thing, and this is how you I explained just... it to the young lady. 
you can be yourself. Because she was like, well, I just want to be myself. Well, guess what? You can be yourself. Be proud of who you are. Yeah. But when you're looking for that promotion and John and Sarah and Samantha that has to make that decision, you know, when they sit around their own little dinner tables, like, well, we can't take Keisha. You know, she says worse, sir. She can't speak correct English. You know, I heard a finna here and there. So we're going to go over here and go with uh, Lakeisha, who knows worse. And it can get even more worse. So we're going to have Lakeisha have the, 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 the job. And, and, and this one over here, we, we she just needs a little bit more. And, when they, and if and you don't know how to play that game, you're, you're, you're not going to get nowhere. And so you have to be able to filter yourself. I, mean, I got it's, you. It's jacked up. That I black got I'm not you. saying it's okay. I well, got that's you. Just the way it is. But they, so when they it. was hanging us, so they was hanging us in suits. When they was hanging that's us, true. they was hanging us, and we could read. We had businesses. Ooh. When they bombed Wall Street, mm -hmm. then was that was our shit. Yeah, so it don't matter how people. intelligent you are. It don't matter how many degrees we don't went out here and got. We still who we are. So if if who still I am move. offends anybody. If who I am offends anybody, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I apologize, but at the same token, I'm going to be me because I'm just comfortable as fuck being me and not having to convert who I am and my nappy hair and the words that come out of my mouth to be what the fuck they want me to be. And I'm always going to be Britney. And I work with some of the most prestigious people in the world right now, but they know one thing about me. I'm true to who the fuck I am. Can we can we get can we can we can we can we, can we, can we get us some water? No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. No, so check I'm good. This out. I'm check this out. Good. <laughs> okay, now that that point's been made. Yeah. All right. Osama been, been drinking. drinking. Yeah. How did you come up with that name, man? Um, I used to wear, well, I still do wear my beard. My middle initial is D, my last name Rankin. That's drinking right there. And people have been mm. saying yeah. that for the longest. People used to call me Stankin' Rankin back in the day. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> oh, so I just thought I had, I had the beard with the gray in it, and I just went with Osama been drinking. I got you. Yeah. Okay. What about that drink. tattoo? <laughs> well, wash your hands before you roll up. That was just something silly. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I know. That was just something silly. Because first of all, don't just don't like give you me can't... no ass blood smell like nuts. And... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, my God. Because I'm an advocate. You can't fuck after everybody. You can't and fuck after so everybody. On the other hand, you got to put, don't put your weed in your ball set. No. I... <laughs> God, damn. Damn. hey yo, man, she keeps saying stuff, bro, damn. and I just don't be with it. She keeps saying stuff, and I don't oh, be Lord. with it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, yeah, that's all. It was just something, I'm you know. So controversial. I'm so a dang on. I'm, I'm silly, so I just say, hey, man, I only put that on my hand, oh, you know. And I'm an advocate too. Legalize it. They should. Why do you think they should legalize? They have here in North Carolina, but it's only certain people that can get it. Like, so if you have like MS, you have gastroparesis issues, mm -hmm. you have any type of stomach problems that you need to help control nausea, like they mm -hmm. have Baranol, what they give um, a lot of people that have been over war and stuff like that. So here in North Carolina, it is legalized, but only to the in cancer patients and things like that. But how it is in New York, um, how it is in California, no, we're not at that level yet. Mm -hmm. I take Marinol, but it ain't like the same thing you don't really get like a high off of it mm -hmm. but you know um they have but not to the level that everybody's expecting it to do like they do in like they did in virginia but i think it's coming but another thing that people don't understand we're in a bible belt you know what i mean so that's something that really these old these old see how be getting ready to <laughs> osama what's your thoughts on that mm. would you get into that and would you get into that business yes that i i when it legalizes, yeah, that's a that's a dream of mm -hmm. mine to get into that business because you know it's a billion dollar industry, man, yes, and it is. just like too, just bro. like a lot of you know industries where there's a lot of money to be made, yeah. like we're lacking in that. You know what I mean? They're like, well, they're gonna give we, us all kinds of like, shit like, 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 to that money. like even back when you know no weed and marijuana was really like taboo and all that that was your brain on trucks like white folks yeah like white now, folks now, now they, they was making it. money on it then yeah. though they was making yeah. money on it then you yeah, understand what i'm saying but them. they but mm -hmm. they want you to make you they want to make you think that it's some gateway drug and all this and all we that we've never like, been nah. a gateway drug North carolina is, is so full of shit because we got the we, we got all these cigarettes we putting out there mm. but i bet you and alcohol i, I know for so sure that we got some um R.J. Reynolds is tired with a lot of the weed cigarettes that's being sold 
in California. Yeah, no. they, they, they a lot are. of them warehouses sitting out there in the country right That's now. That's right. Wanna, I'm just ready to go into a store and get my weed with no problems instead of waiting on somebody who say they got to go to their kid practice or they got to go <laughs> or they, I got to wait for them to get on lunch break or I got the I got the I, I'm ready to go in a store <laughs> and get my reefer. Like and yes, like yes, uh, yes, yes, like because you know, like I mean, and like bruh. Over it, and I knew should, I've been smoking. I ain't got to tighten up real quick. It should be a session on the yes. EBT card. Hey, he want he want to do like they do in Germany and Amsterdam and all them other wonderful places. They do it the and they give free health care. Yeah. They do, and we don't. Let's not talk about how they what? get free health care. Yes, they get free health care, honey. We no, they it's even it's, give you an Uber back home. It's over a few in countries overseas. Yeah. Here yeah. they yeah. kick you out in four days and say, "I hope <laughs> your Medicaid pays for this extra blanket I gave your child," and then it goes on your credit when they don't. Like, it's crazy Dang. how America treats their people. Like, I think it's ridiculous, but oh, that's yeah. a whole nother... If, if, if you're behind in uh, child Frankie, support, what you gonna do about Wait a it's minute. going on your credit. <laughs> oh, it does. <laughs> Suspend your license. It's all about Look, money, man. We done made this a political show. Y'all have. And I you was, don't like nothing I, I really, say. really expecting something else, y'all. <laughs> he, he trying to tell you don't try to say words. He said, don't say don't nothing, nothing no more. Daddy talk, daddy talk. Oh, all right. <laughs> so, <laughs> what is, what's, what, what's in the future for drinking, man? What's going on? What do what, what, what you see yourself in the next five years? What's happening? <sighs> man, next five years. <laughs> Bigger on the comedy scene. Um, I can definitely see that for you. Um, bigger in radio. Okay. Bigger in radio also because I feel like uh, I feel like I got something. Oh, I feel you like do. I got something in you radio. Do. So, and um, with having an improv background and all that, you know, radio comes so simple. It's 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 easy to me anyway. It feels easy. Um, but yeah, just bigger in radio, bigger in comedy. Uh, I may be on the screen. Mm -hmm. Or two, you know. Okay. okay. I've dabbled in acting before, you know. Eighty five Central is on uh Tubi. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what's up. You, gotta, get the video too. you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, I've done I've done a few videos for people, the music School videos. Right down the street, bro. What what about what you They got a lot of acting classes. Oh they do? Oh. I'm just throwing it out there. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, cause you just said school arts and I was like, what doing? They paying? <laughs> <laughs> I go over there and slang. I go over there and slang these jokes. Just going back to the acting class. I go over there and slang these jokes. I know that's right. You know, get the yeah. acting class. I but yeah, think, you know. but yeah, but yeah, you it's know time that. To get paid. Yeah, it's time to get paid. Yeah, I'm just, I just, just wanting to grow in both fields. You know, in comedy and in radio. You know, definitely. see what that take me. See what that take me. Definitely, definitely. Awesome. Damn. Okay. So, uh, what the fuck else? Do you have any shout outs? Um, any um other business ventures you wanna put out there? No, no, not really, not at this time, you know. Just make sure uh shout outs, just make sure you tune in to Drink on the Rocks, Monday through Friday, six AM to ten AM. Uh check out my podcast, Last Few Hits Podcast. It's on our YouTube, that's Last Few Hits. Myself and Darren, Big Baby Brand. Um mm, shout out to Darren Brand. Shout out to uh, shout out Chico Bean because um, Chico, Chico. like no, no, for real, like like that brother there is a solid like brother because he Love to have him on like he didn't have to, for real for real, he didn't have to come back and take me on the road with him, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But this mm -hmm. is one thing he always say to me. He'd be like, "Drank you the funniest nigga in the world to me," mm -hmm. and he told me that, and he was like, "When I'm able." To have my own tour and I'm going out on the road doing my own thing, I'm taking you with me. Nice. And just shows the world around. Because I don't fuck with y'all flat out from motherfuckers. <laughs> so shows the world around, you know, when it, when his time came, he had his tour, man. He came and got me. And we've been rolling since shit before COVID. COVID shut us down for a little bit, but then after that, back rolling again. And, you know, shout out to Chico Bean. Shout out to Roxy. Uh, she gives me, you know, creative freedom to be me. Mm -hmm. Shout out to her. Uh, shout out to my family, my wife, my kids. That's what's Everybody. Up. Yeah. Yeah. Bad, bad, bad. Bad. That's what's up. Anybody I left out, don't take it personal. Wakanda Feb. <laughs> <laughs> Did he hit us with the Wakanda Feb? <laughs> I love it. Hey, uh, when, when, when? Which camera on, too, so I can be looking at three of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, when yeah. is the um? Oh, glass. When the next? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. When is the next show you gonna be yeah, doing? Yeah, sitting there with that stocking uh, cap on. Stand up that man. Uh, next, next time I'm doing stand up. Yes. Um, true story. You know, so other people get paid fake with you. You know what I'm saying? I'm kind of like right now. I ain't doing comedy for a little while now. Uh, uh, Beans out on the tour. He's on that. Uh, I forgot the name of the tour, but it's like. Yeah, we the ones tour. He's out on that tour, so he put his tour on hold for a minute. Mm -hmm. So we're not doing shows. My next show here in this area will actually be in May, May third. Uh, some more, some more. Tony Roberts, Bill Bellamy, and I believe Lavelle oh, also is coming back. And they they actually had me on their show last time they came through Greensboro. Had me open up, and they called me again to open up again for them. So would you would, would, would you be uh, willing to do a show here in Winston? Yes. Yes. I mean, cause some, cause some, man, I done talked to a couple of comedians. They're like, man, I ain't fucking with Winston. No, I mean, Winston don't know how to act, <laughs> right? Okay, I don't blame them folks. Like, cause Winston, they. I'm just saying, if, if it was the right situation, you know. The yeah, right the right, the right situation and all that. Yeah, I'll come do a show uh, in Winston, no problem at all, man. Like, I don't, I don't have no problem doing a show in Winston. No doubt. No yeah, doubt. I, I may have a problem going to a few clubs. But I, I, but that's everywhere. That's a lot of few other places too, though. Well, I ain't playing. <laughs> hey man, true story about Winston, man. Hey, for real. Hey, bro, for real. It was like for a few years I had Winston on. Got done on like nah. I, I was on, I was I was I was on like nah. Cause it's my freshman year. I just got the tea right. And the first two times I came to party in Winston, shit popped off. <laughs> <laughs> shit popped off, and I was like, God damn! Every time I come down here to party. Shoot, niggas running or something. <laughs> so, boy, I went on a high eighties on Winston for real, from like probably like ninety five, from, oh, like, right. from like ninety five, ninety six to like to the two thousands. Oh, I was Lord. like, nah, bro. <laughs> Winston not that bad though. Between those times, it was. Yeah, it, I mean, I, I'm from Philly, and I just think Winston is you just. Wasn't here then. Yeah, I went here in the nineties. I was here early two thousand, but I heard about how bad Winston was. Yeah. Like I used to date this guy that was from High Point. I think. They all slow, and um, oh. he talked about like this. Oh, shit. He talked about they talked about this big fight that went down at this park, and I'm like, he would be afraid to come up to Winston to visit me. I'm like, little niggas, you wearing a whole shirt that say I'm from High Point? Like, and first of all, you quiet and you high yellow, and ain't nobody paying. Let me explain something right. to you about Winston Trefo. If you ain't from here. We know you ain't from here. Yeah. They call us. Yeah. They when I went to Winston Salem State. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I was girl. I don't fuck with them locals, bitch. I'm a local. I don't mm. fuck with y'all. <laughs> yeah, you gonna fuck with me by the time we done because we gonna turn up. And I win was this. I was embraced <laughs> with love <laughs> when I got here. I just did not know there was a problem until you know that cornball from High Point had decided to say that Winston it's was a crazy, problem. and I was just it's like, well, problem. I traveled between the cities and was perfectly fine. Winston gave me a lot of love, especially yeah. so did Greensboro. I mean, I had to get a couple of tap a couple of heads along the way to. Prove to them, yeah, I'm from up north, but I can still get down. Mm -hmm. I went to college in Florida, and I'm with the dirty, dirty, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I like Winston. I mean, I really do. I think it has so much potential. Yeah, it does. It really does. And, you know, but I feel when people don't want to come through here, because I've also watched things happen here, and I'm like, dang, y'all always screw something up when y'all get it. But I think... If they have the right leadership, I think Winston would be great. Right security. Yeah, you gotta have. You gotta have. Not you, tiny, because you know you turn up too much. And, and, let, and let me just say this too: I trip, I, I trip <laughs> off. Of, I trip <laughs> off Winston. Like I even trip off Durham. I say the same thing about Durham. Oh, Durham. stole my car in Durham, man. Yeah, Durham crazy. But anyway, oh yeah, they nuts over there. But but for real, for real, like I love North Carolina. Like I don't want to live nowhere else. Yeah, this is my second home. You wouldn't believe what people told us when we first started doing comedy together. They told all of the all of us that. They told me that. People said that to me, Bean, Darren, Burt, and Dot. They told us we had to move. Y'all ain't going to make it here. Like, y'all too big for Why? here. Like, y'all ain't going to make it here. Got, they told us we had to go to Atlanta. Why we got to do LA, that LA and all that. But it, was, it, 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 it wasn't, it wasn't, no, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't really North Carolinians who were saying this. It was just other people who were in the business and stuff. 
just like that, you know, just that whole mentality of North Carolina, and you know, just it's just you know, just you wait, like you got it, like you got to go to New York and Atlanta and all that. And we was like, yeah. nah, like so we homegrown, we staying yeah. here, cause we yeah. rich here, and yeah. we like we here, and the talent that's here is unbelievable. And all of us, all of us, still reside in North Carolina. That's awesome. That's what's up. And, and, all of us. And, and, and and it's a lot of North Carolinians that's done touch the industry that a lot of people mm-hmm. not aware of, or just right. we just don't get no love on that shit. It ain't. Yeah. Yeah. We get love, but they ain't showing us, goddamn it. Y'all ain't showing us. Well, that's because You're telling us. they don't, they don't, they're not here anymore. Like you got J. Cole is one of the biggest artists in the world. International. If he just came Feeding and set up, up shop, I'm talking about set up shop. Like, yo, I'm setting up shop in Raleigh, Charlotte, Thir- like I'm I'm everywhere and I have I a presence. Be. And I know he brought the festival here. One of, one of the biggest and one of the biggest yeah. you got to set up in the shop. country see people got to see you you remember like when knife one we saw knife one then they did the you know you got to be you got to have a presence for people to know that yo like I'm out here I'm I'm tangible well, I think but, we but, doing but, better I think we I think it's getting better you know yeah it is and I'm not, the baby rapper, I'm not specifically I'm not specifically ragging on these people but yeah you got you got to uh, be tangible Jodice. <laughs> say what? Say her. That's that high point shit. That's that high point shit. See? That's, that's that Charlotte shit. Hey, what's that, up? Yeah, yeah don't, don't act like Jodice. Now, Jodice put North Carolina on the map. Jodice, that's my name. I mean, I didn't, the only thing I knew about North Carolina nothing. was uh, uh, Michael Jordan up in Philly. I really didn't know nothing else until... I moved and started moving around on my own, but I See like North saying? Carolina. Yeah, I mean, rich, it's awesome. Man. I ain't got a problem with it. I think it's awesome. I just don't need no more up north people to move down south. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired of seeing all y'all tags. They coming um, because it's y'all affordable. From, they, they Even though I'm it's from affordable. They it's gotta, not because North Carolina and South Carolina did not raise listen, their minimum wage. It's still listen, at seven twenty five, and everybody else has raised listen, their over thirty states. Li- li- listen, but if you bring your pension down here, if you don't have a damn self the card up there in motherfucking Philly. That's fucked. right. You're not going anywhere. Okay. You're fucked. What's a self call? It's like y'all city bus. Y'all yeah. going right here. They train cars. Our, our That's they train cars. Because, mm-hmm. listen, not only do you have to gotta pay gas, insurance, mm-hmm. car payments, now you got to pay these shit called to- toll passes. Yeah, going up north. Just yeah. to drive on From these motherfucking Jersey, streets. To Delaware, it's crazy. They really like get anywhere. You got to pay all these damn to- You got to have at least $25 worth of goddamn change in your damn car just I, to drive. I, I, love, I love my North Carolina do not living. Listen, do not yeah. listen to him. That's still well, you means do not move here. <laughs> do not move here. That's, that's it's when, really bad Like how y'all feel About the south It happens shit. for it's real like, It's bad I just don't yeah. want them To come Like when every time I see a Pennsylvania tag I be like Oh it's the Philly niggas That's <laughs> another reason I'm grateful for they comedy Because it allowed me To travel and see Other places yes. And you know right. See how You know how Have you got this Now when I went to Philly Me and my homeboy We in there We about to get us A Philly cheese steak For Woo! the first time Hold on Hold on Ooh, it, 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 ooh. And I don't know what the, what it is with that damn cheese whiz shit. But First of all, you put a cheese no. whiz on a cheese steak, you are crazy. That is the weird people in Philadelphia. Well, they do that, that everywhere up there. Cheese whiz on that the shit, cheese steak. That shit it's everywhere up there. They do that everywhere up there. Or, no, no, they, those they, are they, the weirdos of Philadelphia. They open that can. No, that's them, they do that at all the spots that they, that that's famous. No, that I don't went to. They be spreading that thing on. I'm talking about Explorers Den. Shout out to but Explorers Den. But damn it, I, I wish I would have known you then. Iska Biggles. Nobody's putting cheese. Uh, them weird people. I have cousins that's weird like that. That put cheese whiz on their cheese steak. It's not normal. That shit ain't cheese. normal. But that's but another no, place. No, it's just the cheese whiz no. with the steak. To make my point, to make exactly. my point, we just we was conversating amongst ourselves, and the local there was like, I don't mean to butt in y'all business, but y'all from North Carolina, huh? I didn't know we had an accent. Y'all do. Yeah, we do. Wow. Yeah, we yeah, southern than a mother. Yeah, I didn't know. I mean, I was I was oblivious to this shit, and I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> You like, see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, y'all have an accent. Yeah. But what's so funny is when I go up north, they say I sound southern. You was when I'm down here, they say I sound like a Yankee. So, I mean, I can't win for losing anyway. Oblivious. Shout yeah, out. But y'all do. Southern people have a southern draw. And, you know, you, but it all depends on what part of the south you're in. Like, Florida, they'll be like, yeah, I'm finna go. I'm finna this go cat over knew, here. This cat knew exactly where we was from. Because y'all said, have North Carolina has a certain type of draw, just like Florida does, Miami does, Georgia does. Right. Like you can tell, like, if you've been around or have family members in these different parts of different states, especially the South, you can tell the difference. 
Like, I can tell somebody when they're from South Carolina, yo, you geechy as hell. Like, yeah. I hear the geechy in ya. <laughs> it's geechy. <laughs> but it's sexy, too. You sexy. It's I know sexy. that's right. I like, I like Have you ever got that, though? Uh, yeah. Hell yeah, yeah. I got, uh, I got friends from like Detroit and stuff like that. They they always talk about my uh, my accent and stuff like that. Just stuff just stuff I say, like right. like like hot done yeah, and got it's... done and all that. Them. Yeah, and all that. Hold on, hot gun, hot done. What did you just say? Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like. <laughs> so y'all too bad no, no, right no, now. No, 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 hold on, no, hold on. What the hot done? <laughs> say say that again. What you say now? What hot done? Hot done. <laughs> like man, what is hot done? What's that? It's kind of like goddamn. It's kind of like worse. Hot, hot damn. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not hot like worse. Worse. See, worse is some. <laughs> when people say worse. I, I wish I never she, broke no, it up. No, she felt some kind of way about that because she, 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 she know that's dead wrong. We go around just telling people she say worse like that. She felt some kind of way. That's why she came back. That's why she called it back. But no, but it's different though. It's really different. It's different. It is. I'm I told y'all they had me right here by the goddamn bus station and all that, man. Downtown with Salem. I'm here yeah, in 30 mean. minutes. But no, for right, real. But yeah. in saying all that, man, I like I like my North Carolina living. Mm -hmm. Like comedy has led me to, like you know, has allowed me to travel and see a, a you know a bunch of different places in America. And if you think we got nah, we don't have tra traffic jams. Oh no, we don't. Well, we have it like nah, like people that don't like. Know how to I can drive. imagine getting up. And knowing I only have to drive five to ten miles, and it's going to take me an hour. Mm -hmm. Like that's the that's how people living in these big metropolitan cities, yeah. and I just couldn't do it. And I, I love my North Carolina. You living. live in Philadelphia, you got to get on five here. buses and a train, and hope you don't get robbed in the process to get downtown to yeah, your desk. Wow. The Shout out to my people in Philly because it's rough. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I remember I just had to wake up, go get on the L train. All Not the downtown. L. Then when the lights used to go off I, on the subway, you'd be like, oh, shit, I hope I still got my purse and my sneakers. I stayed at the Tacoana Project right oh, now not, Frankfort, oh, America, oh, Lord. Marguerite. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> he was I, in the hood, hood. I had to get on the L train mm -hmm. all the way to uh, 12th of Chestnut. Mm. And um, I cut her. Mm. I grinded that bitch out. I had to. Philly is a rough. And then I came back to the hood and, and cut there, too. Mm. I was cutting in two shops. My best memory of Philly was uh, 2001 Philly Greek Picnic. I crossed in 01. I crossed, okay. Al I crossed Alpha in 01. Okay. And then we Alpha went man, to... Uh, 06. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We went to Philly, the Philly Greek Picnic in 01, man. Dope. Great. Dope. They turn out on the plateau. <laughs> That's it's all types of things happen out on the plateau. Not just Will Smith's summer, summertime. Because <laughs> That's what we call it. Summer, summertime. Yeah. Shouts out to my own girl, Jocelyn, too. She was from... Um, from uh, uh, Philly, and she showed she showed me and my homeboy around. Showed us a good time up there. I got to see uh, Patty LaBelle house. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, how many times did you see Patty in the hood? You see that so many times in the Liberty Bell. You, I mean, you literally grow wait a minute, up Patty LaBelle stuff. and Liberty Bell. It's all the same thing. <laughs> Like when you get into school, like they have these certain t anybody from Philly comment down there. Yes, you go see the Pay La Bell, you go see um the Liberty Bell. I mean yeah, everything that, that everybody are turned up to the see. The Rocket Steps. Yes, all that you know what I mean? People are ran up. Nigga, I thought I was from New York when I got steps. on the train my first time. I know can't nobody in this room run up them steps because I've tried even at a youngster and it was hard. Oh hell no, nah, I'm not can't do it. I did. You did? I yeah. walked. You ran them all, all, all the way to the top. I ain't ran, and but I walked. All the you way. And you, went like like this. Was, you was breathing hard, though. I know you was breathing yeah, hard. Yeah. That I wasn't mean, no gonna, smooth. I mean, you running up the steps. So, yeah, you're going to be breathing hard. Did you do the dance? Did you do the dance? Nah, I'm trying to tell you. Where's the video? I want to see. The da -da -da. <laughs> there is no video. Well, well, see, okay. You talking about Cat Williams and his, his stopwatch. <laughs> I don't have proof. Because I know running up them steps ain't no joke. <laughs> I know you had to hit the knee a few times. Like, ah, damn, how Rocky do this. Man, shit. you were stripping at eighteen. You could have ran up the steps. Oh, I know that's <laughs> Was you to pay me? Shit. Oh, <laughs> no, put some money up. Put some money up there. I'd have shut up, up. turned the fuck up. <laughs> Yeah. Fuck dirty that shit. Dirty talk, dirty talk. Dirty talk, dirty talk. That's right. <laughs> shit. But I don't know. It depends on if I was drinking, so I wouldn't have been able to make up them motherfuckers. That's too. <laughs> shit. <laughs> this conversation has been. Oh, some have been well, drinking. Hey, this has been a this has been the lightning one right here, man. I'm gonna need y'all to go to 102 Jams every morning and check my brother out on the um, on the morning show. Uh, 
with uh, the lovely Roxy. That's right, drink on the rocks. Drink on the drinking on the Roxies. And uh we also need for y'all to take y'all stinging ass to Dirty Talk Pod 336. Don't stare but share. Go vote. And go vote, man. Vote for Frankie. Yeah. We need some euphuses <laughs> up in there. That's right. Is that a word, euphuses? Yeah. That, it, that yeah, is. We are not going to get into words that are grammatically <laughs> incorrect and phonetically Euphasis? incorrect. Oh, I'm I'm We're not going to do it. Because she already don't like so I'm telling you, but that, that thing on her spirit. No. It's on her I, spirit. If I would have heard I'm you so say good. words to Brittany, I'd have been like, oh. <laughs> no, girl, that's not a word. Please don't say that. I can't right, stand that. Let's do two more words. That's not a word. <laughs> that's not a word? That's not a word that black folks use. Fenna. 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 Okay. One Aura. One. That's big. Aura? They, they aura, say aura. Aura. No. <laughs> no, no. You say, people say aura like, dang. Like aura is one of the things people said when they was trying to, you know, you trying to get a word. You be like, aura. 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 Yeah. Like that what that was. 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 Aura. 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 <laughs> now, and, now you do have some country people that when they spelling something, they be like, yeah, and they it's, go, it's, you know, aura like T. That's me. That's me. They be like T R U C K. Yeah, aura. Aura is it's R. My kids was raised here in the South. Nobody taught them to say aura. They said R. I don't like aura. <laughs> right there with worse R, R on the end. R, 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 before R, we go though, man. The R draw so it's kind of remind you of nigga or something. So, uh, nigga. Well, nigga. All right. But go ahead, bro. We done. We about to be out of here. We about to be out of here. Yo, be hey, out. before we go, man. Hey, look. You ain't got to move to the other side of town for your neighborhood to be better. Mm. I know your that's right. Your neighborhood can be better. Where you at right now? You know, we always wait till we move. To the other side of town with stuff nice so where stuff is nice to change our attitudes and com to conform to where we at nah it could be right in our neighborhood our neighborhood can look just like theirs mm -hmm. but it starts with us so Amen. please come vote go right. vote we, go vote we gotta let's stop. come we together gotta, we gotta stop pointing the finger mm -hmm. at everybody else out there and just start looking at this mm -hmm. person right here everybody yeah we can do it for ourselves first that's right y'all just gotta believe y'all can man amen that's amen true. to that Amen. Y'all ladies got anything to say? No, nah, they can't say nothing. Else. I know that's right. Peace, love, and have grease with your folk <laughs> ass. Alrighty. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Oh, it was such a delight. Yeah. It was so nice. So nice to meet you. Good night,